right? That's not acceptable. I think maybe, maybe two, and then let's bring the threshold to four. No, because see, if you look what's happening, oh, that's too close. You, yeah, you get some kind of modeling going on. It's pretty gruesome. <coughs> Looks like acne or something. Crater face. <laughs> um, maybe two, probably one. Yeah, let me try three, go down to two. Threshold. Nice thing about threshold two is it can maintain a lot of the grain. You ever notice about photos, real photos, <laughs> like from film or prints, they have grain? It's a real fine detail that it, it, it's hard to, to catch it. But if you examine a photo close, you'll see it has grain. It's part of the integrity of the image. And when you get rid of that with digital, you change it. And, and you can tell, it just doesn't look right. So you gotta do something to help maintain the grain. So I think this is okay. Let me just go down to, I'm not gonna get rid of all the spots, but I would say I'd like to get rid of most. Now I hit okay. I zoom out before, after. Before, after, see? You, sh you should see a difference, right? Only problem is I have uh, affected a lot of detail. So what I do in, um, uh, okay, I'm sorry, show of hands for Photoshop. Show of hands of Photoshop elements. Okay, we have a little more elements, people. What I would do in this case, if I had elements, is I would duplicate my background copy. So now I would have three, if you look at my layers palette here, now I have three. I just undid my dust and scratches, by the way. I just undid that. Now I apply my, what I did in dust and scratches on this layer. And I can just do that real quick by going to filter, dust and scratches, and then it remembers what I did and just does it for me. I don't have to go back, oh, what did I pick, one or three or whatever. Then I would take, I'm doing this as if you were in Elements. Otherwise, if you were in Photoshop, we would use what's called the History Brush. I take my Eraser tool, which is right here, and I would actually go in and erase where there's details, such as his eyes and his facial hair, maybe even his nostrils. They're not being smarty pants. And what happens is I'm erasing from that layer, and yeah, I'm bringing those dots back, those spots back, but I'm keeping important detail in his hair. I mean, look at that. But, Oh, don't pay attention to the spots, pay attention to the hair. Right in here in the coat, there's, there's detail in there. I might have to change the brush size. Right here where there's a knot in the tie. I, I'm just gonna bring that tie back. Right here, an edge. In the mouth. Eyes, eyes are critical. Maybe around there. Some of the hair. His hair is kind of faded out anyways. But it's detailed right here by the ears. And I might have to go right along the edge of the head. This is real subtle, isn't it? But it's, it's, it's hard to see it on screen. The screen always, even if we had the lights off, which if you want to, you can turn it off. But you got to, you got to pay attention to these details. <laughs> That's my point of telling you. You have to pay attention. And then you can go in, and now that I erase that part, I go to the layer underneath it, and then maybe I could apply dust and scratches, or I could do that little healing brush. And just work in there to get that. So in effect, what you're doing, you're going ahead and you're erasing your, your, your 
top layer and so that the second layer comes through with the details? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I did. I'm erasing it. I erased parts of the top layer to show through those details. And you got to work on it in a methodical fashion. You know, oh, let me just zoom out here. Let me work on the baby. Let me do this. You should go, if, if you're an, an English speaker, you know, from, you can go from uh, left to right or right to left. I've been studying foreign languages and getting myself mixed up, but you know what I mean. Left to right. <laughs> if you're not an English speaker and you speak Hebrew and Arabic and other languages, you can go from right to left. Uh, whatever you want, but you got to do it in a methodical fashion. If you go to my uh, website, I got a free video about the grid command to help you with retouching. It's, it's a pretty cool tutorial. Um, and of course, if you're like, what'd you say? Just send me an email or call me up. Um, also, we have a mailing list in the back too. That's another great way to stay in touch. I have an email newsletter where I send these kind of tips. When I have a new video, you'll get an alert. Um, I think I want to move to another picture, but let's take some questions. So in effect, you have three layers up. Yeah. You went ahead and you took the top layer and you raised it so the second layer would go ahead and show through. You did that to face number one. Okay. So so when you want yeah. when you would go ahead and save this then? Well, I would be saving it as I work. Okay, but but it would save all three layers as a package? Yes, I just saved it now. So we save all And, and I would package. save it, you could save it nowadays, you can save your TIFFs with layers, but I recommend it while you're starting out, you, you should save it as Photoshop format. It's really up to you. I don't like to tell beginners, yes, yeah, save your TIFF with layers and, because they get confused. So, um, you know, in the rushing, again, I, I'm sorry I didn't say save it as Photoshop. Um, but, but I definitely deal with that in the course. But you really should, it, it is to save your <coughs> files as TIFFs, your originals as TIFFs, then when you work on them, save them as a different file name. Okay? If you don't get anything from the class, I want you to get that. Because that's crucial, because guess what? If you do that, and you send the files to the next generation, and hopefully you will have drilled into them the importance of family history, they will be able to work on it. But if you're saving as JPEGs, little JPEGs, and this and that, they don't have anything to work with compared to the original. Okay? So that's the main thing I want you to get out of this. <clears throat> um, any other questions? I'm sorry, it's kind of heavy. Uh, if you could, you can get all that at the table. We have a little price list, and you can join the email newsletter. Um, so let's get. Time is okay. I saw this one here. I thought this was interesting because. Uh, Judy Burke, that's you're right there. Here. You're right there. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting because it has the print has what's called dimpled texture. You ever notice some prints that you have? They have like a a texture on it, uh, like like a dimples. Yeah. So they, do you know why they did that? <coughs> to make it easier to handle. Because if you have just a glossy photograph and you touch it, your fingerprints show up really good. But if you have a dimple texture picture, it kind of hides that. Huh. Your, your oil still gets in there <laughs> from your fingers. <laughs> but it's, it's not so obvious. But it still looks terrible when you... Uh, Oh, that's because I hit, I kicked the power board out. Let me reload that. Any other questions? If photos are stuck together, you mean like face to face? Has there any, anyone here done that successfully? 